it's not uncommon for a house that's 100 years old to sag or dip a little bit. And I can see that there is a little slope in the floor right there. Can I borrow your tape? Of course. All right, let's see. If I go over here, this is the high point. We'll stand the tape up on edge and let it go. Oh, yeah. Well, it does slope down right there in front of the refrigerator. Seems to slow down right there a little bit. But the floor does have a dip right here, and it does settle down over there. I think what we need to do is take a look in your basement. All right, sounds good. Lead the way. Follow me. All right, Tommy, so here's our basement. Okay, and your foundation is what I thought it would be, a rubble stone foundation on the bottom, which means it's big stones. And then when they get up around the ground level, they build it with brick. So you have a nice facade on the outside, and it gives you a flat surface for the sill to rest on. Your sill is a six by six, and your joists are led into that sill. Okay. Now down here in the middle of the house, there'll be another beam right here. And this is a six by six also. And it's resting on this column, this brick column, and the brick chimney. Now, when I'm building a house today, there's a rule of thumb that I use to size the joist that I need. I take the distance, I divide it in half, I add two, and that gives me the minimum size of the joist that I need. Okay, I'm not getting it. Okay, let's do it this way. So take the tape down there, and we're going to measure from the outside wall to this beam right here, and I have 14 feet. If I take 14 feet, I divide it by 2, that's 7, plus 2 is 9. Okay. That means the minimum height of the joist that I need is 9 inches at 16 inches apart. Now the height of your joist are 7 and 7 eighths of an inch. So is that tall enough? Not by today's standards, but your joists are rough sawn or true dimensional. These are two inches thick. Today's joists are thinner. This house has been here for 100 years, so I'm not going to worry about the joists. But what I do want to do is walk around the basement and see if I see any issues. All right, Megan. Now we're standing underneath your kitchen, and right about here is where your refrigerator is upstairs. This joist right here is actually in front of your refrigerator, so this joist gets a lot of work from people in and out of the refrigerator, moving the refrigerator in, taking the refrigerator out, changing it. A lot of stress on that joist. So if you look right here, this joist has actually failed right here at this connection. Oh, okay. All right, now. The reason that has failed is because of the way the house is built. Years ago, they would take the joist and they would cut halfway up the joist and they would leave a shelf on it that would fit in a notch that was into the carrying beam supporting that joist. But the problem with that connection is with all of the people in and out of the the refrigerator or walking in that area, you put a lot of stress on the joist, moving it up and down, and this weak part right here, all that stress would cause this joist to crack, and that's exactly what's happened up here. Well, why would people build houses like that? Well, mainly because they didn't have one of these. These are actually metal joist hangers that you would nail against the side of the carrying beam, and your joist would sit in it being carried at the bottom instead of halfway up. Okay, but can we fix this crack somehow? We absolutely can. Let me show you how we're going to do it. All right, Megan, the way I'm going to fix your broken joist is using this hanger right here. It's called an old work hanger, and it's actually designed to fit around rough sawn lumber, and it fits perfect. But the first thing I want to do is put some glue in that crack. Great. I'm just using regular wood glue. Okay, now I'm going to push that crack back together using my bottle jack and a 2 by 4 Put it underneath my hanger. Now I'll just jack it up. All right, is it closing up up there? Yeah, it's looking good. Should do it right there. I think you're right. Now all we have to do is nail the hanger to the beam. To do that, I'm going to use these nails right here. They're called hanger nails.
All right, Megan, you're still gonna have that dip in your floor, but your joist is fixed, and the rest of the structure looks pretty good. Thank you so much, Tommy, for coming and helping us. We feel much safer. Well, I'm glad I could help. Well, they don't build them like they used to, but Tommy, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> hey, I live in a house of the same period with the same kind of structure. It's fine. Okay. All right, now think about it. What happens is you have a joist that's notched into a beam. Mm -hmm. All right, when you notch a joist all the way up here, so now you have a two by eight that is actually a two by four. Used to be a two by eight, now it's a two right. by four. So you're supporting that joist on the end, so it has a tendency that it could stress and crack right there. Right, so you want to not notch this as high, but don't you have to, I mean, with this beam? What's In the alternative? This case, they had to do it because it was a six by six beam and not a six by eight or an eight by eight beam. So this should have been an eight by eight, maybe. Right, because this notch would have had to, would have been, could have been lower and this could have been higher. All right, so if you run into that problem, you can always um, support it with a metal hanger, right? Absolutely. You put them up. Just easily. make sure you put them up tight. Nice. Okay. Now think about it. One single joist, all right? If you run a joist across the room and you were to walk on that like balancing act, this is going to jump and bounce up and down. Mm -hmm. So what they do when they build a house is they actually install something that is called bridging. Very important. All right. What happens is when you step on this joist, you transfer the load under tension this way oh, yeah. to this joist and this joist and so on down across the room. Right. And, and I didn't see any in that house. And in fact, I've been in a lot of houses where this has been removed because someone wants to run you know, duct work or insulation. That's right. right. That's well, that's very observant because there was a lot of it knocked out in that house. All right, so what happens is a, a plumber may come in, <laughs> all right, and he will knock this out because they don't understand what Because we for. can. Right, you can. As soon as you knock that out, you interrupt the strength of the bridge. Yeah. So what you need to do is when you need to run a pipe or some, a lot of wires, you knock out the bridging and you install what is called solid blocking bridging, all right? And you jam them in between. They have to fit snug. Now you can drill your holes and do whatever you have sure. to make up for the loss of the bridging. You can also put solid blocking all the way across your basement ceiling if it's out and you want to stagger the joints and nail them in and they have to fit tight. And that'll stiffen everything back right. up. Absolutely. Nice. All right, so we can drill through the blocking, but sometimes we've got to get pipes, wires, or ducts yeah, across I know. the joist Sometimes and, and you we do. have to notch. Yeah, <laughs> and you do it, but you do <laughs> it wrong. <laughs> did, did you do this? <laughs> no, no, this is yours, pal. All right, this is in the center third. Worst place to drill, all right? all right? I just wanted you to remember this. All right. All right, and it's also too high. Okay. All right, your notch should not be any higher than one-sixth the height. That's oh, right. okay. So too now, deep. Too deep. Now, this notch is in the beginning third or the end third. That's fine, but it's too wide and it's too sloppy. This should be nice and straight. The corners should have a radius, not sharp corners like that. The width of this should not be any more than one third the oh, height. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let me show you the right way to do it. All right. Now, first of all, this is in the first or the last third of the joist, so it's located in the right position. The height is actually correct also. It's not more than one sixth the height, and the width is not more than one third mm. the height. But you notice what I did here? I drilled the hole first to make a radius corner, mm. and then I cut to that. That lessens the chance of that breaking. Nice. Well, if you have a joist that gets messed up by someone like Richard, <laughs> do you have to replace the whole thing? No, you can sister a piece of wood right beside it, like this. This is a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. What I would do is I would drill my hole and cut my notch out first, jamming it into place around the hole here in the wrong place and around the wires over here. But what I would want to do before I put it in place is put a lot of construction adhesive on it, nail it right nice and tight to the joist, but I would nail it and not screw it. Why not screws? Because drywall screws, which most people would use, are too brittle. Ah, gotcha. okay, so nail's the right way to go. Right. All right, well, great information as always, Tommy. Thank Thanks. you. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. I'm Rich Trithui. And I'm Roger Cook. For Ask This Old House. Boy, you're bad. <laughs> Get the saws off. Come on, we'll cutting for you. <laughs> <laughs>